Today, I'm going to be talking about the soldering equipment that I personally like to use, as well as some basic 101 soldering tips for anyone who's getting started. So first off the bat is the Weller WES-51 soldering station. My father gave it to me a very long time ago and it's always worked. You can set the temperature. It really it has everything you need it to with no extra BS, which is really why I love it. And then of course, there is the solder. This is Kester 6337 alloy. It comes in 0.031 inch diameter. And really it's it's the most high quality solder that you can buy and you don't want to skimp on the stuff. If you're having bad solder joints, if you're having trouble soldering, get some high quality solder and it will really, really change your world. So the second tool I have on my bench is this WEP858D hot air rework station. And it's really nothing special. I think it's 35 bucks or something on Amazon but it really, really makes a huge difference when you want to shrink heat shrink or melt some hot glue. Just having it by your side is really handy to have. And of course the hand tools, a good set of tweezers, something like this with a flat tip. It's really nice for when you want to hold some wires or that cable you're trying to solder is getting a little too hot. So the first question I always hear from people who are new to soldering is what temperature should I be soldering at? And the answer to that with this 6337 solder is probably around 700 degrees. That's where I leave my soldering iron. And then another important thing is making sure that your, your soldering tip is clean. You want to tin it up and then wipe it on a wet sponge such as this to clean off any oxidization or old solder that's just stuck to the tip there. So here's an ultra basic soldering 101 here. What you want to do is you tin the soldering iron like so, and then you want to tin the wires. And all you're really doing here is you're preparing the wires to make it easier later on when you're actually soldering them to the pads. So you just tin them up, you add a little solder while you're soldering and make sure that the wire gets up to temperature so that it's really combining with that solder there. Next you're going to do the same thing with the pads on whatever you're soldering to. So what I'm doing when I'm off camera there is I'm tinning up the iron and then wiping it on the wet sponge as to clean the soldering tip there. And then you want to tin up the iron so that you have good thermal conductivity and then hold it on the pad and add a little bit of solder. This is in real time so you can see it's not a very long amount of time that you're actually holding the iron on the pad. And then next up, finally, you get to solder the wires to the pad. So you tin up the iron, hold up your, your wire and the pad and you just tap it really. It's a very quick, quick process there. Once again, this is real time. So if everything's tinned up properly and then your iron is also properly tinned up, it should really be only a second or so that you hold it on there to finish the soldering job. Of course, if you're using larger gauge wire or larger pads, you might need to hold it on a little longer. You might need to turn up your temperature a little more or sometimes even use a larger soldering tip that has more thermal mass and will allow you to solder larger wire. So thanks for watching my video. Uh, it was really just a quick guide for people maybe new to the hobby, as well as just sharing the equipment that I like to use. Hopefully it will help someone else in the future. And if you want to watch more, remember to subscribe and leave a comment below on maybe the next video I should work on.